Okay, uh, really great to be here. This is actually my first state of the map. Uh, Mikkel, what number is it for you? No idea. No idea. Yeah. But uh, so I'm excited to be here on, on, part, uh, on behalf of the Earth Genome. Uh, uh, between me and Mikkel here. Uh, well, I'm going to be talking a little bit about work we've been doing, exploring how AI can help us imagine the future of our maps through this uh, demo toy chat assistant for OpenStreetMap data that we've created called ChatGOPT. Um, a little bit of background on the Earth genome for those of uh, you who are not familiar with us. I put the text from the website up there, but it can really be just distilled down to a message of, we hope to make help uh, uh, enable positive decisions around the environment through the best use of uh, technology and environmental data. And if you want to shorten that even more, you can just say, basically, we love AI and we love maps. Um, we love AI. Why do we love AI? Uh, because uh, we're on a mission to make environmental data accessible, integrated, and actionable, and, and AI can help make that possible. Uh, and as, as an example of that, uh, we have, um, with the support of the Mindaroo Foundation, um, helped uh, create Global Plastic Watch. That this is uh, uh, one of the world's greatest authorities on informal, large plastic dump sites across the planet. And the way this works is we use AI to scan satellite imagery and, and pick out these different um, smaller, un previously untracked plastic waste sites. And these, uh, and we can tell that about 25% of them are close to waterways and uh, contribute disproportionately to the 10 million tons of plastic waste that ends up in the oceans every year. Uh, so AI is really powerful uh, it, to help us make use of all that satellite imagery really quickly in order to, to, to generate these important data sets. Um, we also love maps, and uh, why do we love maps? Well, it's actually the same reason we love AI. We're, we're trying to make environmental data accessible, integrated, and actionable, and maps make that possible. So you can really say maps were the original geo AI, right? Um, uh, a quick example there, uh, we are a core technical member of, of Climate Trace. Uh, we take we all the data that's produced through the Climate Trace platform and we plot it on, on a map. And so uh, for those of you who don't know Climate Trace, this is uh, a large effort that Al Gore is really um, uh, instrumental in, in leading uh, about uh, calculating emissions across the globe from the ground up and then estimating and aggregating them into actionable insights. And of course, uh, visualizing these and interacting with them in some kind of map-based platform is, is uh, the only way that we can, can take all this uh, abundant amount of data and make it something that can be quickly digested and help inform positive decisions. Um, so we love AI and we love maps. And so naturally we've been pondering lately as AI has just exploded um, in popularity and across the, the conversation in, in all kinds of different communities, we've been pondering the question, how can we best bring together uh, AI and maps. And um, like uh, many of you, I think that our, our recent interest has been really piqued by the development of these powerful large language models like, like uh, chat GPT. Um, I guess just, I was curious because I'm up here, how many of you use chat GPT or another large language model every week in a work setting? Okay, yeah, good number. How about every day? All right, not, not everybody, but we're getting there. I, I think it's gonna become increasingly common uh, as, as we move forward. Um, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a quick tip here for those of you who don't use these tools every day. And so, uh, that chat GPT and other AI tools like BARD or, or whatever, actually have a very uh, uh, well-built functional knowledge of, of many geospatial tools and libraries, in, including those listed up there. Uh, I also put some uh, uh, example uh, prompts you can provide to these uh, platforms in order to get back an answer to help you um, do some kind of geospatial computation or analysis that you would want to do. And this way allows anybody can be a, a power user of any of these tools. Um, in particular interest to, to this uh, group um, and what we built our chat GOPT assistant to work with is this last example here, overpass uh, QL and XML. Um, and uh, as a quick example here, 
uh, overpass uh, QL overpass is just super powerful, right? We can query all of OpenStreetMap's data, but it's actually pretty hard to learn. Um, and using chat GPT or, or other tools, you can quickly generate a valid overpass query. This is an example that I performed that might be relevant for everyone in this room here. Um, asking for chat GPT to output a valid OSM overpass query for restaurants in Richmond. Um, and as you can see, um, I also asked for it to output a, a URL, a clickable URL to, to, to actually auto populate that in overpass turbo. And it does a, a pretty decent job of helping us find restaurants in Richmond where we could go for dinner uh, one night when we're here. Um, and this way, anybody can use overpass, uh, just even if you haven't read any of the docs on how it works. So we were excited about that idea and we thought, how can we best integrate this into a tool that helps demonstrate the power of what these language models can do? And what we did is we built this geospatial AI assistant which is really just a wrapper around a couple APIs. Um, the, the, it's 150 lines of code or a little bit less. And it, um, the main magic actually happens in a set of English language instructions that we provide to the AI assistant, which you can see right there. I instruct the, the AI assistant to do three things. Number one, um, when it's prompted with a question from a, a user. Um, number one, uh, provide a statement consenting to help. Yes, I'm here to help you. Number two, return a text of a valid overpass API query. And number three, add a little personality. Add a fun fact related to the question or a very fun, funny joke or pun related to the question. And you can see I elaborated there. You can see which part I was really most excited about here. Uh, but the uh, the um, the point is that uh, the, the, by just providing these assistant instructions, as you can see in that, uh, uh, diagram um, at flowchart uh, on the right side there. The assistant instructions are, are supplied along with the user prompt uh, to the OpenAI API, um, which queries GPT, GPT-3. Um, that uh, uh, responds with a, a textual response, which is um, which is formatted according to those instructions. We then extract that overpass QL, which uh, it, 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 we pass to the overpass API. The overpass response comes back. And then we could parse that on our own, right? We could read that response and make sense of it. But I don't want to do that if, if a language model can do that for me. So we actually feed that overpass response back into GPT-3, which then can read it, summarize it, and provide an answer to that original question. And this all gets fed back in a loop in such a way that you can have a chat, an ongoing uh, uh, conversation with, with the chatbot assistant in order to um, have a, 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 an evolution of, of your, um, your query. Here's a, a quick example of how this works. Let me see if I can just speed it up. So this is, we're asking for a restaurant for celebrating grandma's birthday in near Hereford, England. And uh, the, the query goes out, we get a response back from uh, the OpenAI GPT-3 model. Um, and you can see it does those three things. First of all, statement consenting to help, a uh, text of an, a valid query, and then a fun fact, did you know the world's first restaurant was opened in Paris in 1765? Wow. Uh, then, uh, so that's passed off to the, uh, uh, the, the we pass it off to the overpass API, response come back. In this case, there are too many restaurants near Hereford to, to send that back to GPT-3 to summarize, but uh, we can, uh, we can um, uh, iterate on that query. Now I'm asking where, uh, she loves Indian food, so let's limit it to places that to serve Indian food. And right, so that's, uh, it remembers that we wanted to search near Hereford and refines that search and says, now we're just going to um, uh, look for, uh, place limit our search to just Indian food, and in this case, this time uh, the response can be uh, read by the uh, the the, the overpass API response. We can; it's a sufficiently small size that we can parse it with uh, GPT three, and it gives us this uh, natural language answer to my original query. If you're looking for a restaurant to celebrate your grandma's birthday, try these restaurants. Um, and then uh, I asked it just for a fun question, what's the meaning of life? And it, had, it responded with, it says, I can't help you, but it, you saw there was a joke there at the end about maps. <laughs> uh, what did one map say to the other map? Let's just stick together. 
I don't know about its humor, but there we go. Um, so the main findings of uh, of Chat GOPT are uh, as are listed here on the on the slide. Um, LLMs like GPT-3 can be an effective bridge between human language and, and the language of technical geospatial workflows. Um, a, a conversational chat can enhance the quality of experience. That personality is actually really something interesting to play around with. Um, I didn't cover this in uh, those slides, but uh, we wrote up a blog post about this as well, where we go into a little bit about this, this last point. The injection of built-in uh, LLM knowledge is both powerful opportunity and a potential risk. Uh, so that's the first part of these slides. Now we're going to go pivot and look at the future and where the, the, the next phase might go with AI and maps. Uh, the first thing that I should note is that I'm sure and many of you have felt this is that the pace of innovation is really accelerating. Since we built chat GOPT in uh, March, lots of exciting developments have occurred like Planet uh, uh, published a queryable California where using natural language, we can query their data and do analysis in order to, to learn things. It's text is terribly small there, but uh, to, to learn like what's the average temperature in Sacramento. Uh, QGPT, I just saw this the other day. This is an AI assistant for QGIS where you can prompt it and it'll help you do things in QGIS that you wouldn't know how to do naturally otherwise. Um, uh, beyond, so those examples I've shown you so far are, are really just assistants and they're wrappers around APIs. But of course, AI can do a lot more than that. Um, and there's a, a lot to say about the uh, artificial intelligence ability to have a real semantic understanding of data. And, and it looks like, is this going to work? Yeah. Uh, here's an example of actually of OpenStreetMap data where my, this is something that my uh, coworker came up with where uh, we're organizing OSM tags semantically in an embedding space and then using a text query saying he wanted to know what was what tags existed or are close to forest. A bunch of different tags come back from that search in order to help understand what kind of tags we should be looking for when we're labeling data in OpenStreetMap. Um, a segment geospatial is, an, is another really cool tool that was just announced a, a few weeks ago, I think, which is, uses the, the meta segment anything model in geospatial data, which has a, a semantic understanding of what the world looks like and can help just automatically pull out polygons from, from uh, satellite imagery. Um, and so what I think that the lesson really is here is that AI can power OpenStreetMap at all levels of the tech stack, from editing the map, from auto segmentation and, and labeling, uh, through uh, maintaining of the OSM database, through element monitoring and error detection, uh, through reading the map, through these kinds of assistance that I've, I've um, uh, demonstrated a little bit today, or, or allowing for third-party app integration through uh, the ability for data to flow back and forth between APIs without needing to necessarily have um, uh, a, a lot of engineering work go into that. Um, so that's how AI can affect OpenStreetMap. But if you turn that question around, I think there's also something really interesting to think about, about how OpenStreetMap can affect AI. And so all those models that we've, we've looked at so far, like GPT-3, right? That's all just scraped from the internet data and uh, our, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's not geo-specific data. Uh, like the, the image models are all trained on pictures of cats and dogs, right? Because that's what's on the internet. But if we think about where we really should be heading, and I think this is what Earth Genome, my company is really excited about, uh, is, is what if we built AI specifically around geo applications? And so in that sense, we can have OSM data be one part of the, the data set that feeds into a large Earth observation model, which has some awareness of what uh, the planet looks like and has awareness of, of geospatial coordinates and time and have that learn something really uh, the, the essence of the Earth through something that we, we talk about as Earth embeddings. And that can in turn flow back into OSM data in order to help refine that, that, um, that data over time. Um, just a, a quick uh, demo of, of where we're just starting to explore these kinds of ideas. We're de de developing something called Earth Index, uh, which allows us to search across the planet 
Um, the, in this case, we're looking for gold mining in the Amazon, and it's just a quick little conceptual demo. But by looking for a place where gold mining has progressed and then searching across the Amazon, we can find examples of other places where uh, new gold mining has occurred. And so we have uh, temporal and spatial data all wrapped into these embeddings that can then be used for important geospatial workflows. Uh, and I think that that is it. Um, if you're interested in, in checking out the code for chat GOPT, it's there on GitHub. Um, and otherwise, yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching the talk. Uh, feel free to get in touch with either Mikkel or myself and uh, stay tuned for the work coming out of the original. Thank you.